Well, welcome. Grab a chair and uh, we'll get started. Um, super excited to have you here. Thanks for coming. Uh, the first portion today of RevU is going to be on mentorship. And we're very fortunate today to have the opportunity to hear from somebody who has been a great mentor to me. His name is Dave Myers. Dave Myers uh, was, my actual, uh, was actually my very first professional mentor. And uh, today he is over the mentorship hub here at RevRoad, as well as the sales hub. And he's also in charge of attracting top talent. So he helps each one of our companies bring on the kind of skillful, uh, incredible cultural fits in terms of people that really help companies grow. And I'm looking forward to hearing from him. Dave has a great history. He has uh, been a successful senior executive in multiple companies. Uh, he spent a lot of his time working in educational technology with some of the largest school districts uh, in the country. He has helped literally tens of millions of children learn to read, learn math, and many other skills. Uh, literally changing their lives and the trajectory of their family's lives. So super excited about what he's been able to accomplish and uh, personally what he's been, been able to give me as I've had the chance to work with him. So with that, let me introduce Dave Myers. Dave, take it away. Okay, does that work? Testing, testing. I've got a green light. Is that better? Okay, very good. Good morning, everybody. Thanks, Darren, for that introduction. Uh, this is the third uh, opportunity that I've had to work with Darren. Uh, Darren is a once-in-a-lifetime uh, leader that if you have a chance to cross paths with, you want to try to hit your wagon to, and, and this is the third chance I've had to work with him, so I'm thrilled to be here. Um, I'm thrilled to be part of RevRoad. This is a great organization with a great mission. Uh, it's full of uh, friends and colleagues that have tremendous talent and expertise, and we are just super excited uh, to help uh, new entrepreneurs with their business dreams. It's also kind of really cool to be part of RevRoad, if you guys will indulge me for just a minute. I am super lucky because I have a daughter that's going to school locally here in the uh, Provo area, and she works at RevRoad. So I actually get to work with my, with, one of my with my daughter, who happens to be my favorite daughter. Riley, would you raise your hand back there? That is my daughter. And, and I know that... I know that dads aren't supposed to have favorites, but out of all of my daughters, she is absolutely my favorite daughter. I have three sons and one daughter. But Riley has told me, and I believe her, if I had 15 daughters, Riley, who would my favorite daughter be? Absolutely, it would absolutely, absolutely be Riley. But uh, yeah, that's, that's another wrinkle with this opportunity at Rev Road that's really fun for me. I get to work with uh, my daughter, and maybe later on this summer, uh, this next summer, some of my other children will be uh, mentoring here as well, so super excited to be here. Okay, today as Darren alluded to, okay, testing, testing, yes. Uh, we're gonna talk about mentors, but before we talk about mentors today, let's talk about the problem that mentors can help solve. So, testing, testing, okay, there we go. Um, um, new entrepreneurs are business builders. They're builders. They have a lot of stuff that they build. They have to build products and services that they sell. They have to build teams. They have to build an organization that has processes and resources in place so that stuff works. Uh, employees need to be paid. Customers need to be taken care of. A business builder or a new entrepreneur, they are builders. There's a lot to build. Now, some new entrepreneurs have all the knowledge and expertise in order to pull that off, maybe. But generally speaking, they don't. Generally speaking, they need, uh, they need help. One of the best things that a new entrepreneur can do to get that kind of help is to look for and find a mentor. So we're gonna talk about mentors today. Uh, before I do, let me, let me introduce a little bit more about RevRoad. You're here today as a guest uh, here at RevRoad. It's an organization that helps um, uh, companies build bigger, better, and faster. But one of the things we do, in addition to helping the companies that are in our portfolio, we try to do things like this uh, event and give back to the community and help everybody, everybody that wants to learn and grow, whether you're part of our portfolio or not, we try to help. So not only are, are we offering this here for those of you that have been able to physically get here, we actually uh, are streaming this right now too. So I'm like famous right now on YouTube or, or live right now, which is a first for me. Uh, but anyway. So that, that's kind of uh, what RevRoad uh, is. What we do is we have organized ourselves in 12 areas of expertise. Uh, these are 
These are areas of expertise that new business uh, builders uh, need help with, generally speaking, unless they're already experts in those areas. One of those areas is mentors. And, and like Darren alluded to, I'm in charge of that hub. What's a mentor? Do you need a mentor? Um, if you need a mentor, how do you find a mentor? And if you do actually find a mentor, how do you successfully work with a mentor? These are some of the questions that I'm going to go over with today and discuss with you, and, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll do a Q&A afterwards as well. So that's what, we're, that's what you're here for. Um, okay, if you'll indulge me, I'm going to start off by telling you a story. I like to um, teach with stories. Stories uh, help you remember things. They help you um, remember the points that are trying to be made. So if you'll indulge me, let me tell you a story. I hope it's one that's memorable, and I hope it's one that will uh, help you remember some of the points we're making today. Okay, all right. My story is about three things. It's about this house, this landmark property in the Hollywood Hills of uh, Southern California. It's about my dad, and it's about Madonna. And these are all three in my story. All three of these things are gonna converge. You ready? Okay, let me first tell you about this house. This is a, a landmark property uh, in the Brentwood neighborhood of Hollywood Hills. It's kind of a famous, it's kind of a big deal because one, it's been around for a really long time. It was built in the 20s. Two, it is a, it is a monstrosity of a home that kind of cascades down a hill. It's seven stories. Uh, it's, it's large. Everybody knows it's there. It's big. And it's, it has a colorful uh, history. Case in point, some famous people have resided in this home. Does anybody know uh, a gentleman in American history named Bugsy Siegel? Anybody, anybody know who Bugsy Siegel is? Okay, some of you do. Just real quick, Bugsy Siegel was a bad guy. He was a mobster out of Chicago. And in many circles, he is credited with kind of catching the vision and, and believing that uh, a gambling mecca could be built in the mi middle of a desert in a state called Nevada. And he built the first casino in Las Vegas. Bugsy Siegel lived in this home for a while. Another famous person that lived in this home, because it's such an impressive uh, place, is uh, Madonna. Now, you millennials, you young people, you probably don't even know who Madonna is. But in the 80s and 90s, um, Madonna was a thing. She was a singer, and she tried to be an actress, but she, she was a thing. And, and she bought this home, and she decided that she wanted to make it her own. When Mon Madonna bought this home, it was a much more traditional home. It was uh, white stucco with red tile roof, so kind of a Southern California mission-style home. She wanted to add a little bit of Madonna flair uh, to it, so um, she was influenced by some, some design that she saw in Southern Europe, and so she wanted to find somebody who would paint her, this home for her. Let me see if I can, it's not working, the clickers. Okay, nope, too far, gotta go back. She wanted to find somebody that would uh, paint this house for her, fire engine red with yellow stripes. Uh, it was a style that she saw, saw that she really liked. There are very few pictures remaining of, the, of this, uh, the, this paint job that she hired somebody to do, but this picture kind of shows it. If you see those retaining walls um, right there, they're striped. Uh, if you see that tower in the middle of the picture, it uh, has vertical stripes. Back in the day before the sun and time uh, wore on these colors, uh, these, this house was literally fire engine red, and those stripes were literally bright yellow. And it, it was very upsetting to the neighborhood, but that's what she wanted, and that's what she did. It was a, a super interesting uh, redo for this home. Now let me tell you about my dad. My dad, like you, was uh, an entrepreneur. He was a business builder. He chose to work in the industry of construction, and he had a painting company. He liked to paint homes. Or that's what he chose to do as a profession. Uh, over the course of his career, he decided that he didn't want to paint an average home. He wanted to paint fancy homes. So he moved his business to Southern California, and he painted many homes in uh, fancy neighborhoods like Beverly Hills and Bel Air and, and uh, in the Hollywood Hills. You guys are all wondering, what is this guy talking about, and what does this have to do with mentors? Bear with me. I'm almost done with my story, and then I'll, I'll bring it back. Um, Madonna hired my dad to do this job. And if, I, if you fast forward to the end of the story, Madonna was tickled pink, my dad was tickled pink, he was flattered and he thought it was fun that he got to paint such a nice home for an interesting person. The neighborhood was not pleased, but, but otherwise the story ended well. Um, why am I telling you this story? Well, I, there was a couple of points I wanted to pull out of a story, something that you guys could remember. 
The, the first uh, thing I wanted to point out is if you look at this home, uh, you can't just show up to this home if you've been asked to paint it with a, a ladder and a bucket of paint. You need some, uh, some scaffolding. You need to surround this uh, building with something to help you. So before uh, dad, my father and his company painted this house, they had to put scaffolding around every inch of this uh, building, all seven stories, all sides. And by doing so, that scaffolding gave uh, his team visibility, reach, access, uh, and also uh, it allowed for, for him to put the workers and the resources in proximity to the project to get the project done. So in, in a very similar way, you know, he, he was painting the house, but in, in the same way if you were building the house, you would have to do the same thing. You would have to put structure in place or scaffolding. For my story today, to bring it back to our, our workshop today, I would argue that Rev Road is like scaffolding for a new entrepreneur. If, if you are a Rev Road roadie and you've partnered with us, we put resources around the project that you're trying to build to help you build faster. If you're not a Rev Road roadie, it's okay. It's the, the lesson to be learned here is you've got to surround your project with the resources that you need to be successful. So, question for my story. Wow, this thing just keeps moving without me moving it. Are you doing that, Jason? Oh, is that the deal? So you're moving it for me? Thank you. Okay, that, now I feel like I'm in control. Awesome. So uh, the point, the, the reason for telling this story, I hope that it'll be a memorable story, but the point of my story is this. If you are a business builder, would you rather build with the lights on or the lights off? If you are building a home or painting a home, would you rather paint in the daylight or in the night? Obvious, the, the answer is obvious, but, but check out my cool slide here. Thanks to uh, uh, the marketing team, they helped me uh, with this, uh, this little slide. Isn't that cool? I would argue for my presentation today that a mentor is like light. They provide wisdom, experience, and knowledge, which is light, right? A new uh, business builder, somebody that's trying to build a business, they need uh, good visibility. They need reach. They need access. A mentor can provide the light to, to help a him or her. That's, That's my cheesy analogy. analogy. What, what, what do you, you think? think? Will, Will you, you remember, remember that my dad painted Madonna's, Madonna's house? Yeah. Will, Will you, you remember, remember that a mentor is like light? I, I hope so. That, that was the point of my story. story. Okay. When, when I, I say mentor, mentor, I also mean coach. coach. To me, and hopefully to you, they kind of do the same thing. Mentors and coaches help athletes or new business builders uh, uh, with wisdom, experience, and knowledge. They help them. Um, Work, work through obstacles, obstacles that they've, they've never worked through before and help them uh, work better, faster, and, and build us uh, larger. So mentors and coaches, when I, when I talk about a mentor or a coach, kind of the same thing. Do you need a mentor? Well, you need to decide. You need to decide if, if somebody uh, with expertise that you don't have could help you. I did some research. It's interesting. There's a lot of people who are very, very successful that uh, claim that they had mentors and that those mentors helped them uh, a great deal as they... Uh, either built their business empire or they succeeded uh, as an athlete. Just uh, case in point, here's a few people that I, I found as I did some research that claim that uh, a mentor was a very important part of their development, of their success. Okay, so if you, decide, if you decide to be a mentor, I mean, if you decide to seek out and find and work with a mentor, I guess the message of this slide is you're not alone or you won't be alone. Lots of people have used a mentor. I like this proverb. Uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Again, surrounding yourself with good people will help you be a better person. A mentor can be one of those people in your professional career or even in your personal career that can help you uh, go farther. All right? Uh, let me talk a little bit about the mentor program here at RevRoad. Uh, we have, um, through our network, through the, 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 the founders and the members of the RevRoad team, we have a large network of, of friends and associates that have been very successful in business. Many of them have raised their hand and said, hey, we would like to give back, we would like to help, and we've taken them through a process of becoming a mentor. Uh, there are other people maybe in, in uh, we have some roadies that are asking for mentors in different interest, industries where we don't have a mentor. We've asked, uh, we, we've been working uh, diligently to, to seek out and find uh, folks that we don't know and bring them forward and see if they would be willing to give back as well. And we're making a, a, this large group of folks that would make great mentors for our roadies. 
You, if you're not a part of RevRoad, it's okay. You can do the same thing. You can mine your relationships and your network and your friends and find people that might be a good mentor for you. Now, when you're looking for mentors, a couple of things to be thinking about. Um, obviously, uh, you know, ideally you want to find a mentor that's been there, done that already and can share with you their successes and failures and help you uh, better overcome obstacles and, and move faster and succeed better. So you want to look for successful people, but you, you don't want to just look for successful people because sometimes super successful people aren't very good mentors. Because to be a good mentor, you have to also have good coaching skills. You have to be a good listener. You have to be empathetic. You have to be supportive. You have to be somebody that can actually teach uh, the lessons that they've learned throughout their career. So when you're seeking a mentor, look for somebody that's been successful and look for somebody that can be a good coach for you. Uh, lastly, make sure you ask somebody to be a mentor that has time to help you. Uh, if, if a mentor doesn't have time to help you, it won't be a very fruitful and productive uh, relationship. Okay, so, so food for thought when looking for a mentor. Uh, once you find a mentor that you are excited to work with, uh, we would encourage you to formalize your relationship a little bit. Put some structure around how you are going to work with your mentor. Uh, we encourage um, the roadies at Revero to schedule a weekly uh, meeting or a weekly call and uh, touch base with their mentors on a regular basis. These meetings are for reviewing goals and working on uh, strategy and overcoming obstacles. Uh, it's for input. These meetings are for input, support, problem solving, things like that. Also, uh, oftentimes mentors can help with uh, uh, introductions through uh, their networks to people that you need to know or that would help you as you build your business. Okay. So we encourage you, when you, once you find somebody, try to put some structure around um, your relationship. Okay? Uh, all right. Not all mentors are created equally. This is the part where I kind of warn you, do your due diligence, be careful as you pick a mentor. Because if you don't pick well, you will at least pick um, a, mentor, a mentor that won't be very helpful, but you could pick a mentor that really uh, does damage or doesn't uh, help you very much at all. Um, what I'd like to do is show you an example of, um, of how a mentorship can go south or, or a bad example of a mentorship uh, uh, team. And then I'm going to show you, I've, I have some guests that are, have joined me today and they're going to discuss what I would describe as a, as a good, positive uh, mentor-mentee relationship. Okay. First, let me uh, show you uh, a video. So before I click over there, um, to set this up, this is a, just a one minute video. This is a silly clip from a movie, but a couple of people dubbed over some voices and, and it makes for a fun mentor skit. This is not an ideal mentor-mentee relationship. Okay, hit it. Rob, this is absolutely crazy. I mean, this is borderline reckless. You got it, Blake. We've been working on inspiring others around a vision. I just don't see how this is going to help. I know some mentors are doing job shouting and stuff, but you got to trust me on this one. Are you drinking a beer right now? Nah, it's a Red Bull. Now tell me, how you're feeling? I'm feeling like I can't see with this blindfold on, but I trust the car. You have to inspire and trust. Your people don't need to see it. Just believe it. This car could drive by itself. Now, picture the end state, put the plans in place, put the car in gear, move forward. Okay, you're the mentor. You're in control. I think I hit a car. We'll have some speed bumps along the way. Is that Joe's car? Yeah, I think I'm going to be So when I, when I warn you, be careful. Find a mentor that will be, comp be supportive and, and compliment your weaknesses and help you succeed. Just heads up. You know, do your due diligence. Okay? All right. Well, now let's, let's focus on a positive, uh, awesome uh, mentor-mentee partnership. Let me introduce uh, a couple of folks here. They're going to come up on stage and uh, share with you a little bit their exper experience being part of a team like this. Um, Carmel Larson is a super wonderful uh, new CEO that has started a wonderful care sharing business uh, here in the area that uh, supports mothers and uh, children. And we're super excited, uh, Rev Road is, to be partnering with her and helping her and her wonderful team grow their business. Uh, she, uh, when she joined RevRoad, she said that she would like to 
uh, seek out and, and find a mentor to help her. So we helped her do that. And uh, she chose one of the mentors from our uh, mentor group named Glenn Mella. Glenn Mella is, is one of these uh, folks that, you know, you just want to know because he'll make you a better person. He's not just a successful uh, business uh, story. He's also just a successful person. And he is one of these, these people that have said, yes, uh, I've succeeded. I've had a lot of success. I would like to share and give back. And so he's a mentor for us. Uh, Carmel chose Glenn to work with, and they've been working really, really well together. And I've asked them to join, up, join me on stage and just talk a little bit about their story. Here's one. You can, uh, I figured you would just stand, but please sit if you would rather. successes was he had taken um, his company's uh, global and that was part of my vision and so I was looking for someone who had tread that path before and could help me develop myself as a future global leader hopefully and I could also tell from meeting with him that that our, our values were aligned and that was very important to me I wanted someone who was aligned in, in business thought but also in um, in character-driven thought as well. So that was a match for me. What was the, the solidifying? I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna make sure you share a, a story of two of how he has helped you so far. Okay. If, if you can. I will. Um, another thing that was um, sealed the deal for me is, is that I could tell he really believed in me mm -hmm. and in, in Momni. And mm -hmm. that was very important to me. He had instant buy-in and that was important. So he has helped me um, a, a, a huge amount on many occasions. Three that stand out to me is I have had an opportunity to have several PR interviews, and I've needed to reach out to him on occasions and say, this is what I know I'm going to be asked. Should I say this or this? Is this appropriate or not? Should I not have this and add this? And he's been very helpful in prepping me for those experiences to help me say the right things at the right times. He's also, because he's such a believer in Momni, he's helped me to see the, the value of my own company, my own value that I add to that company, and to not give away too much equity in helping me to select and recruit team members and investors. He's coached me um, quite successfully. I'm, I'm always wanting to give away more, and he's helping me to understand market value and that I don't need to give away that much, and so he's saved me a lot of equity from his coaching. And in a, a recent um, investment round, he's been absolutely crucial in helping me to understand the terms of that investment, negotiating the deal, understanding how to position and place myself, and how to have the right responses and preparation for these investment meetings awesome. and negotiating awesome. these contracts. Awesome. So thank <laughs> Thanks, Carmel. Glenn? Will you tell us a little bit about uh, why you've chosen to be a mentor and, and what do you think, uh, how's, how's it been working with Carmel? Test. Hear me? Okay. Awesome, thank you. So, thank you. Um, I was uh, associated with Aaron and some of the founders of Rev Road from the beginning and was very excited not only to put some of my own capital into the company but get to know many of the roadie companies and uh, just watch the development of what's already taking place here in this environment. Um, 
mentorship, when, you, when you're a founder or a business leader, even though you can be surrounded with resources and people willing to help, it can sometimes feel like a lonely seat because ultimately you're responsible after getting a lot of input for making decisions and decisions that determine, you know, hopefully positive outcomes. And sometimes it is helpful away from your immediate team to have a go-to person, a confidant, somebody to just share ideas or bounce ideas. And truthfully, I think of it more as a peer or collegial type of relationship in most cases as opposed to, oh, I need this wise sage who has all the answers because every business is unique. The timing, the challenges, and what's going on at any given time, we can extrapolate from other experiences. And that's part, part of, I think, the value of feedback from somebody else is, oh yeah, I've been in another organization at another time and place, I've been in somewhat similar circumstances and here's some things that you might want to think about. So um, that, that concept and that dynamic I think works well. We, um, what I particularly liked about Carmel when we first got acquainted and talked about the concept of working together was she immediately came across as somebody not, not just teachable but craving input and feedback, right? Like, I, I know we've got a great opportunity here. I don't want to screw it up. My team doesn't want to screw it up. And, you know, like a sponge. And that was great because in any business endeavor, you're going to throw a lot of ideas out there and realize some stick and others, okay, we tried. It was a good idea. It made sense. So I think we've already had some of those where we discarded a few things and have been, you know, it's been an enjoyable process. We do have a formal process, a time and a place each week, and then there's lots of informal touch points that surround that. So we can count on Thursdays at three here or somewhere else that we agree upon, but we can also count on, you know, calls with or, or ad hoc meetings with investors. The other thing I will say, unique to the RevRoad environment by way of a compliment is you know, being a mentor to one of the companies in the portfolio here, one of the roadies, is unique in the sense that there's already a bunch of infrastructure around the company. So you don't, it's not two of you feeling all alone. You really feel like there are a lot, lot of resources for assistance and direction and bouncing ideas. So it's, for me, it's a very, you know, beneficial relationship and ultimately, it helps if mentors in one way, shape, or form have some skin in the game, equity or their capital investors or whatever, because then your interests are aligned. And the, the advice is like, look, if I were on your team, this is how I would deploy my resources. So that's why you, know, you, you communicate at that level. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, okay, yeah, excellent, you guys, thank you so much. I'm gonna, I've asked Glenn, yeah, let's give him a round of applause, thank you. Awesome. I've asked both uh, Carmel and Glenn to stay with me up on stage because we're about done and we're going to do a short Q&A. So if there's anybody with comments or questions, they'll be here on stage also to ask. Okay. So in conclusion, we, uh, we talked about the importance of a mentor. We talked about uh, if you choose to, to seek out and find a mentor, uh, how you should do that. And then if you do choose a mentor, how to work uh, with a mentor successfully. This is a perfect case study for you to, to learn from. Uh, Carmel and Glenn are doing a wonderful job supporting each other, working in a collegial way, uh, moving uh, Momni forward. So great job, you guys. Thanks for modeling for us. Okay. Uh, so in conclusion, in conclusion, I would uh, argue that mentors are, are awesome. Number two is very biased. I know, forgive me, but I would argue that RevRoad mentors are super awesome. Um, Number three, you can live without a mentor, but should you? I think it's an important question you should ask yourself. Don't forget, just so you remember, my dad painted Madonna's house, and driving a car with a blindfold is probably not a good idea. Okay, all right, so that's our presentation. So, we have a couple minutes. Does anybody have comments about mentors or mentorship or questions that either Glenn, Carmel, or myself can answer? Sir. 
You've, You've talked, talked about, about a mentor, mentor and how they might be able to assist you, but as you talk about companies at various phases of their evolution and development, at which phase would a mentor be appropriate in terms of the early startup? Uh, that's, that's a great, great question. question. Um, Carmel, when, when did, did you decide that you wanted a mentor? Well, I've had... I've had a variety of mentors even before Glenn. He's the first mentor I've had of, of his, this caliber and level, which I feel is appropriate to the phase of being um, about ready to receive investment and take a company to the next level. But I think any entrepreneur, any person, should always have a mentor. I've had uh, probably five or six mentors throughout the course of my adult life who've helped me to move to new stages. So I think it's never too early for a mentor. I actually even seek out mentors for my children when they're teenagers. Uh, great, great comment. So that's some, some feedback. Glenn, would you want to make a comment? Uh, just to add to, add to that, um, it's not a given that there's one mentor that would go all the way through the life cycle or life stage of a company. You might find this is the perfect person at inception, startup phase, but when we go to scale a business or go to international markets or something, I need somebody else that's been down that journey. So I think of it as a continuum more than just, you know, one person through time. So, oh, this one's very loud. Um, we'll see which questions I remember because I had a few that, that I thought of. But Glenn, as far as being an investor, you talked about how uh, being aligned in incentives is important, whether that's having a partial equity or, or they've invested. Um, but then also with Momni specifically, you're, you're just now looking at taking on funding, right? So you haven't started your first official funding round, but it sounds like you have given some equity to Glenn. Is that, that right? So at what point would you recommend doing that as opposed to having casual mentors? I, I have someone that I know that has done you know, X thing and I just talk to that person on occasion versus having a, a structured mentor. What did that look like for you and, and when is the best time to be more structured versus more casual? Let me know if that didn't make sense because my guess is it didn't. No, I think, I think I understand the question. Um, so for those not um, roadies or directly affiliated with RevRoad, there's a model here that is structured, even contractual, for mentors to essentially earn an equity stake by, as part of assisting a company. Okay, So we were, if not the first, one of the first ones through that model and figured it out and drafted the appropriate documents. I think in most cases it's more informal, although there are certainly mentors in my own life and in a lot of early stage companies that become angel investors and, um, you know, the, one of the dynamics there to think about, is there anything about neutrality or independence that would be that you might gain from or be benefited if somebody was not also an investor they might just give you more of a contrarian point of view for instance if an acquisition was on the table and insiders were frothing to take it but you know you had an independent voice around the table who you respected and listened to that said hey I know that deal looks good. And by the way, I, I've lived through some of these and have some good friends who have turned down, you know, a, a good friend of mine, many of you know his name in this market, turned down a $140 million acquisition opportunity that would have been a nice multiple for early investors and even management team and held on, almost the lone voice around the board table held on for an IPO, which happened a few years later that took the company's value into the billions. And so, there, you know, you might want somebody who's not a financial stakeholder to give you that kind of independence and neutrality. I don't think there's one answer, but those are some things to think about. Yeah, that's great. Um, quick follow-up question. So on the mentor side, what does it take to be interested, right? So, so to be that person that was not 
invested, but yet they were sitting around the table and having that conversation. Um, how do you find that person that's willing to invest time? In a, in a more general sense, your story, I think, as it becomes a compelling story, right, as you learn it, even hone your, your pitch, so to speak, if you're going to go out and raise an angel round or, or get some other kinds of stakeholders involved, sometimes those mentors are your guinea pigs, your, your audition or your trial runs or whatever. And I think it's incumbent upon the founders to de deliver that compelling story, a differentiated technology, a unique gap in the market that we can exploit, or you know, a competitive advantage or something. And as you do that, boy, people will flock to it. I think I think uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry so much about it. You know, do we have a compelling enough idea that will attract people? I just think um, you know, look for the right skill sets that'll complement yours. <laughs> <laughs>